season two, episode. Devin, what episode am I on? Five. Five? Here, I, I got this. Joe the Pro, episode five. Joe the Pro, episode four. Now I can just cut it to whatever one's right. <laughs> On the last episode of Joda Pro, I had a pretty solid day, averaging over 46 yards a punt, but more importantly, I learned of a CFL tryout happening dang near in my backyard. So I had to start collecting footage for that tryout. I have a decent bit of game film right now, but I have four more weeks to get as high quality of game film as possible, so I really need to start making every single game and every single punt count. Episode five, game four. This is a big one. We're only three weeks away from the CFL tryout. Gotta get something going here. Gotta get something going here. Need some good game footage. It's a nice day. The grass is bad. It's not bad. It's a little thick. It's a little tall. Not too much wind to speak of. That's always liable to change. It goes this way. It can go this way. It can go this way. It's swirl. It can go anywhere. So stay on your toes. I'll let you know in the in the glasses where the wind's going. And just like that, we were off. Things were already getting underway. Our offense was already not moving the ball super well. Our defense didn't move the ball very well either, but I started to notice one thing. This game was going really quick. In fact, the first quarter went by and we only had a single drive. Luckily, that drive resulted in a punt, but unluckily for me, I just was not feeling it today as things would go pretty bad for me. But this field had a nice little press box, and I use the term nice and very loosely here, so Devin was able to get some all 22 films who were able to get a better angle of what this punt was going to look like, and you're going to be able to see it's kind of like a rolling end over end punt, just a not clean hit whatsoever. Hey, hey, hey. So yeah, that was pretty much the entire first half of action for me. You're going to see our offense struggle to get anything going. We turned the ball over, I think, two more times without me being able to punt. And before I knew it, the half was over, and I was just ready to kind of get my legs fresh again. So here's what you missed. The refs are on, I don't want to say they're BS, but pretty much they're, um, we just ran like 34 plays to get done with this half. That is like records. We are like speed running this football game. So I got one punt. That's pretty sh my legs are getting tired on the sideline. I don't know what it is today. It's just not in the air, you know? It's just not one of those days. We're gonna get some warm-ups done for halftime. We'll, uh, we'll see it on film, but yeah, let's get this warm-up in and then hopefully we can actually get something to watch. Otherwise, I'll just tie this video in to next week's Joe the Pro. He's washed. What's he gonna do? I'm literally washed, bro. Take that back. I'm literally washed, man. Isaac's got it. Drop high. Drop high. Make contact low. Do three of those in a row and call it a day. And that would wrap up halftime. I was feeling a little bit better, and before I knew it, I was out to punt again as we were the guys getting the ball first. Now, this ball was not very clean at all, but the less clean thing was where they spotted it at. As you could tell, this white line right here is the 10 yard marker, and this ball clearly bounces in front of it, and I got it marked out at about the It five. marked out like the 15. The where the ball? It bounced it was out like easily in, at the inside of 10. Yeah, it was inside the. I thought it was like at the 5. It was inside the five. Yeah, it was like inside the 5, right? <laughs> I mean, hey, from my stat book, that's a 40-yard net inside the five. So yeah, between the refs not helping us out whatsoever, and not just not helping us out, but getting things blatantly wrong, our offense having less drive than a bicycle, I just was not able to really get engaged with this game. But one bad play let me set up at the opposite 40-yard line, ready to try to get my best boot of the day.
The fact that we somehow didn't get that ball is nothing short of a mini miracle for the other team, but whatever, we get the blindside block and the ball goes back to their 15 yard line. Now I'm not clapping here for the blindside block, I'm clapping for the fact that I knew that we were going to get this ball in pretty good field position, but then the game got really ugly because believe it or not, you're not really supposed to blindside people like that. Pretty much they just need, they tell us we gotta chill out, gotta chill out, too much fighting. I don't know if you got a lot of the uh, post play antics that happened. I got you, I followed you. Yeah. I had to post people out, but yeah. So this just leads to my last punt, ball on the 43. Try to hang one up there, didn't hit it as clean as I won, but forced the fair catch at the two yard line. Don't know why the guy caught it right there, but I'm not mad about it. What I was mad about was my overall performance of the day. No punt was as clean as I wanted it to. My best ball was like a 44, 47. It was just ugly. I ended up bringing down all my stats in every category based off of this game alone. And honestly, I was feeling really sad. So I just had to go home and watch some of the UFL to try to get my mood feeling a little bit better. And it did for a different reason. Wait a minute, I can do better than that. So that's when I had this idea that I was gonna sit down and chart every single punt from the UFL guys and what I found was beyond shocking. If I took just a baseline look at their stats across the first game, compared to my stats across my first game, I would have had the fourth best day just when calculating off of distance and hang time. And even though I felt like today that I just had was a god awful day and half of my punts were pooches, it still wouldn't have been the worst day in the UFL. Not by a good bit actually. And they have a small sample size, I get that, and I'm using a small sample size too. So I'm not trying to draw conclusions or say that people should get fired or I should have their jobs, but it just made me realize that if I can handle the snaps that I'm getting on the fields I've been kicking on, on the how fast I've been moving and still manage to put up numbers that are comparable to what I'm seeing on Saturday and Sunday, maybe my dreams of playing at the next level aren't so crazy after all. So yes, today was not what I needed. But maybe in the grand scheme of things, it's exactly what I needed to refocus. Only a 40.5 yard average and a 4.08 hang time average. But let that be the bottom of my barrel. Let it be the fuel to my fire as I go on and take on the next week on my road from Joe to Pro. Hey, hey, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on.